Ducati or BMW? I am Vitor and I'm going to present you the new Ducati Multistrada V4 and the BMW S1000XR in a way that will help you decide which of these two bikes is the right one for you. They look like they're in the same category and officially they are. That's being adventure touring motorcycles, which means that you are supposed to sit on both of them in a comfortable way, upright. Their seats are rather high from the ground and they should be stable and comfortable on longer trips. And also, you can attach a lot of luggage, take a passenger and deal with a gravel road on these bikes. And this they will both manage. However, I always want you guys to make the best decisions possible. And I want to share my experiences of riding well over 30 bikes over the last couple of years. And I know how frustrating it may be when you order a product and then you are not fully happy with it. So stay with me and I'll help you get all the information that you may need to make your decision. So where the real differences unveil themselves is these bikes characters. Ducati Multistrada, especially in the newest form, the V4 version. And by the way, get yourself a V4S and not the plain V4 version, which lacks a lot of technology. And Ducati will tell you officially that they gave the V4S improved brakes. Well, I am scared to think what they mean by equipping the regular Multistrada V4 with not improved brakes. That's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, go for the V4S and I'll tell you why in this video further as well. So Multistrada's character is much different because of having much more capabilities than S1000XR. Now, what do I mean by that? S1000XR is a taller sports bike. It rides a lot like one. It may make your back hurt if you ride off of a perfectly flat road and is annoying <laughs> when you don't ride constantly being next to a red line. I explained this behavior saying that if you want to ride at the speed of 100 km per hour, you've got six out of six available gears to choose from. It doesn't make much of a difference if you're using the first gear or the last, the sixth gear. It is a little bit uncomfortable to me as it would make me switch gears straight to the sixth under any circumstances riding anywhere pretty much and to me that's kind of annoying and Multistrada is more specific here even despite the fact that it is a four cylinder engine now too still it is a v4 not an inline four and the second thing in terms of differences in characters is that you may actually take the Multistrada for real off-roading and it will do fine the new v4 has much more ground clearance than the previous 1260. It used to be 16.8 centimeters and now it is crazy 22 centimeters of ground clearance in the V4. It is as much as BMW R1250 GS in an adventure version. Now the problem is that nobody knows what the ground clearance of the S1000XR is. Literally, nobody in the world seems to know that and neither does BMW as they don't provide that information anywhere where I could find it. And I haven't thought Unfortunately, I haven't thought of measuring myself when I had the S1000XR, so I cannot tell you exactly, but I'm pretty sure that it's much less than Multistrada V4 and still less than a GS. I'm still talking about Grand Clearance. If any of you knows or currently rides an XR and can check that, then please do so and please let us know. So this is really a lot for Ducati and makes the Ducati also so much more versatile and capable. This is one thing. But even more importantly, the suspension of Multistrada is so much more forgiving and less stiff. S1000XR is not crazily stiff, but it's just stiff. For me, it's actually a bit too stiff. And there was a time when I was so excited about S1000XR and all of that was suddenly gone the second the rear shock absorber sent literally a shockwave into my spine on the first bump. And all of the charm was gone instantly and I remember it still till today. So Multistrada will be so much more comfortable in terms of being gentle to your back. Both of these bikes can have adaptive suspension, but S1000XR, even in comfort mode, will not be gentle. Remember that it's a sports bike with a different and higher body. Even the engine is taken straight away from BMW's super naked, the S1000R, which in turn got that engine from high performance and track oriented BMW S1000RR Superbike. But wait, Multistrada V4 also got an engine from Ducati's naked and a Superbike from a Street Fighter V4 and also Panigale V4. However, 
it gets confusing here and it shows the difference in Ducati's approach in this matter. If you wonder why, perhaps showing that Multistrada V4 is Ducati's only adventure motorcycle over 1000 cubic centimeters, while BMW have their R1250GS, which also competes with Multistrada for your attention, but does it from a totally different position than an S1000XR, from a position of a proper adventure motorcycle. It is way down on performance, however, having only 136 horsepower. Right, there is plenty of torque, and actually with its 143 newton meters of torque to be exact, GS has in fact significantly more newton meters than Multistrada's just 125 newton meters, the V4 version. The S1000XR has in comparison, watch this, only 114 newton meters. So even less than that. So see where the differences start to appear? There's more power, less torque in XR and Multistrada. This suggests that these bikes are expected to be used at higher range of RPM. And this is where there will be more fun than a more touring and adventure-oriented big GS. Actually, this becomes rather obvious when we look at six numbers for these three bikes as the GS joined their company to show you what Multistrada's and XR's characters are about and where a very important difference is. And it should be made clear. So the GS reaches its maximum power of 136 horsepower at 7,750 RPM and maximum torque of 143 Nm at just 6,250 RPM. It's almost like it had a diesel engine with two turbochargers in there in order to not get weaker at the top end. And it's that it doesn't need much throttle to keep going and torque is there at any speed at any gear. We all love it. Now BMW S1000XR with its inline four cylinder engine reaches its maximum power of 165 horsepower at 11,000 RPM. This is around 50% higher than a GS. Maximum torque of only 114 Newton meters, which is way less than a GS, at 9,250 RPM. So what this tells us is that unless you rev the S1000XR really high, you're not getting that much out of what it offers at its peak. It's a quick bike, but you need to ask it to be. Once you do, it gets crazy and you get crazy too. Now, what about the Multistrada V4? Since because of its positioning in Ducati's lineup, it shouldn't go too much in either direction to target kind of the sweet spot. It actually does the job better than S1000XR and reaches its top maximum power of 170 horsepower, slightly lower because at 10,500 RPM. Still late comparing to the GS. Now its maximum torque of 125 Newton meters comes into the game at 8,750 RPM. So just slightly earlier than the XR. And the funny thing is that the previous Multistrada, the 1260, it had more torque with its V2 engine than this one, the V4. It had 130 Newton meters. It also had the Desmodromic system, which was more difficult and more expensive in maintenance. And that was one of the reasons that this new one doesn't have it anymore. You can see that Multistrada is still a bit more in between the R1250GS and S1000XR. And even better, as it has more power than the Sporty XR, while it gives you the comfort of R1250GS. So what about taking corners then? R1250GS is the master here. However, I've heard some initial opinions that the new Multistrada, thanks to its better placed engine and lower center of gravity allegedly, according to Ducati, that it's now even closer to the GS than it used to be when it was in the form of 1260 in terms of handling and cornering. It gets really interesting and as you see I'm immediately comparing it to the GS as a benchmark on this field and not to S1000XR. This is because S1000XR does not in my opinion, a ride as well as the GS does in terms of cornering and staying neutral in corners. It doesn't give you as much agility at lower speeds and doesn't stay as neutral in corners as the Multistrada and the Grandpa GS, the big one. It's, it's just not as good here in my opinion. Now the Multistrada 1260 was already much better than XR and if this V4 is to be even more refined, then this battle is immediately, in my opinion, lost for the XR. Which battle is not lost though, 
is the battle in terms of build quality. A build quality that S1000XR has is typical for BMW and it's just top notch. Everything works smoothly, everything is tight and sturdy, everything looks the proper way and you won't find parts that look cheap there. There is one worst thing that I remember about every Ducati that I've ridden, including a Diavel and Diavel, which are some of the coolest motorcycles in the world, BMW's quality seems to be just not possible to beat for anybody else yet. Yes, Ducati has got beautiful details. It has an Italian flag on its fuel tank. It used to have a beautiful single-sided swing arm. Now it doesn't have this in the V4 variant, so it actually lost one of its attributes. And it also looks a bit more heavy and tall with this new generation, while S1000XR keeps its lean and muscular look. And Ducati actually looks that can enduro bike a lot now. With its heavy front part, at that time with the 1260, I would say that Ducati looked better than BMW in terms of the shape. Now I am not so sure, and it would be, it would be, it would be harder to pick a winner here in this category. However, with the current newest generation of the XR, I think it lost some of its character with a boring and regular front end, and Actually, I'm going to still give it to Ducati. They follow their beautiful way of designing motorcycles, and that's good. S1000XR is now just another Honda out there, nothing special or nothing distinctive anymore. Look at its eyes. They are not so weird anymore. <laughs> but remember, build quality goes to BMW. Another thing that I'd give to BMW is reliability. These bikes are just generally more reliable and that's the end of the story that that's it and almost every ducati that i've ridden had some technical issue more than half including a multistrada 1200 which had a broken fuel level uh, <laughs> a gauge that was ridiculous so in terms of feeling safe with the bike and knowing that you will most likely travel where you want to without visiting a service or having to come back home in a taxi well, BMW wins. Now both S1000XR and Multistrada have chain drives. So in fact, both lose in this category. I don't see a reason for Ducati to sell a more expensive bike than BMW R1250 GS and equip it only with a chain while BMW give their GS an awesome drive shaft. It, come on Ducati, you will get so many more clients if you just learn how to build a drive shaft and put it into the Multistrada or just buy the technology from BMW, that's, that's possible, at least, at least it will work. <laughs> And to keep the balance, I can say that every time I visit BMW Motorrad, uh, which stands for Motorcycle Website, uh, in German, um, and I, I, I read some of their texts, it hurts my eyes first, and then it hurts my uh, brain. I've never seen a website of a respected company that would have so many typos, grammar mistakes, lost formatting, and ridiculous texts as BMW Motorcycles website. And I noticed it back in 2010 or 11, I believe. Fast forward over 10 years to now, and typos are actually mostly gone, but broken formatting and ridiculous slogans that make no sense at all are still there. And I suppose it's still the same person who writes that, it's just now they use some spelling checking programs. So BMW works hard to damage their online presence and they've been constantly <laughs> unprofessional here. And I hope Ducati fans enjoy this. <laughs> but seriously, go ahead and read about the XR. The challenge of curves and kilometers or with the paint variants of the S1000XR, you are already making a clear visual sign. Wow. Jeez, <laughs> I can already see a 200-year-old German sitting and writing this. Imagine doing that for 10 years constantly and not getting any better. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's funny a lot, actually. Okay, but back to the topic of motorcycles themselves. After this recent model change, Multistrada has much more advanced technology available than before. And I will first tell you what interesting and very useful things they both have, especially considering riding safety. Then I'll tell you what Multistrada has more than S1000XR, and then what the XR has more than Multistrada. I think this will be a helpful way of showing you things. They both have traction control, cornering ABS that BMW calls ABS Pro in XR. They both have full LED front lights and different riding modes to choose from. Both can have a quick shifter, and you really have to have it 
it's it's awesome on both bikes it's it's a thing that you if you can just go for it whatever it costs just get it it's it's really great so both can have electrically adjustable suspensions and cornering lights um, same with hill style control, killer ignition, and you can also have heated grips. You've got to pay extra for these things in both bikes, or um, in case of Ducati, you have to choose the V4S version, which I highly recommend that you do. With a larger screen, uh, you can have your navigation map displayed on your screen there. And also, you may connect your phone to Multistrada's computer and see what's going on with it right there on the bike screen. You need to play with your phone itself. Now, here it gets even more interesting as Ducati can have adaptive cruise control while BMW is stuck with regular cruise control in XR. So this is something uh, Multistrada has more. Even the GS cannot have it yet in the 2021 model year. Perhaps it will get in late 2021 or 2022 uh, model year. What it means is that regular cruise control keeps the speed that you set and that's it. Multistrada can be equipped now with a frontal radar with a range of 160 meters that sees vehicles in front of it and will adapt its speed slowing down to follow the ones that are in front of you instead of smashing into them. But mind you, this is not a collision prevention system and it won't do the emergency braking for you. It's there to gently follow others up to some point of speed difference. It cannot suddenly slam on the brakes like an angry horse and throw you in front of itself and then ride over you. Nope, that is not the case here, so you don't have to worry. Italians at Ducati are still owned by Germans, Germans at Audi, which is in fact Volkswagen. So there is some limits, <laughs> there are some limits to that craziness. This is one thing. The next thing that XR cannot have is blind spot detection, which has been introduced in the Multistrada and which monitors what's going behind you and warns you with the light on your mirror on the corresponding side. Now, if an XR tries to overtake you while you're riding a Multistrada V4, the bike will warn you with an orange light on that side so that you can speed up and not let the BMW succeed. Now, that is freaking smart, Ducati. A BMW doesn't have that feature, but see, Italians are crazy to this point. <laughs> What else? Nothing else in terms of technology, uh, maybe except for uh, backlit switches on the handlebar of Ducati. And that Ducati has a cool feature on their website where you can play with Multistrada's onboard computer online. It's like a video game where you can play with its settings. It's a really cool simulator, in other words. BMW have pathetic slogans on their website. And the only cool thing is that there are exhaust sounds that you can play there. Now, what? technology BMW S1000XR has or can have that Multistrada before doesn't have? The answer is nothing except for an ability of breaking your spine. And so we move on. Seat height of Multistrada is adjustable between 84 and 86 centimeters and BMW's is of 84 centimeters with no adjustment. So see, it's those little things that Ducati wins with in this case. Or if you get the better equipped V4S, which gets a bigger six and a half inch screen instead of just a five inch screen, there is a clever knob to adjust its tilt. And no such thing in BMW, I believe. Fuel tank capacity is 22 liters for Multistrada and 20 liters for the XR. XR is lighter though, and this could be its advantage. But only if you like crashing very often and then have to be doing a deadlift with it. So <laughs> 226 kilograms of wet weight for BMW and 242 kilograms wet weight for Ducati. So a 16 kilogram difference. Yes, there it is. And BMW will hurt you less if it falls on your foot. Now let's compare prices starting from base prices. BMW S1000 XR starts from around 17,000 euros and goes all the way to 25,000 euros depending on equipment. Multistrada V4 starts from 18,000 euros to 21,000 euros for the V4S, which I recommend highly to you, all the way to 26,500 euros V4S Sport and fully loaded. So there you have it. Multistrada gives you a bit of BMW R1250 GS in terms of riding comfort and cornering capabilities while being more powerful than a sporty 
BMW S1000XR. Now, S1000XR is for those that enjoy riding superbikes with the sound of an L94 engine, but perhaps don't have enough strength in their arms anymore, or just, <laughs> just don't want that uncomfortable position, which is actually a serious argument here. Or if they want to avoid potential reliability problems that uh, are legendary for Ducati brand. So I hope I made your decision easier, and now you feel ready to choose your dream bike, because this BMW S1000 XR and Multistrada V4 are dream motorcycles for many of us. And if you are to make a decision, it needs to be a 100% good one. This is what I wish you guys, and now remember to test ride each of them before you put your money on the table. Have fun there and see you in the next video.